Hello and welcome to Snowbiz 24-7, small screen, big host, worldwide audience. I'm your host, Nicholas Snow, and yes, over six feet of snow has hit your internet experience. Watch anytime, anywhere from any internet connected device. For this episode, I'm on location in Palm Springs, California at a prestigious art gallery. It's actually the James Jensen Studio. It's known as an interactive space where art is made and displayed. And I'm going to go inside and talk to a hot artist who I've happened to have known for years, Timothy Crow, who had a fabulous opening last night. It was pretty busy, though, so I wanted to wait till today for the tour. So let's go and meet him. Hi, Timothy. Hello, Nicholas. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's wonderful seeing you. Thank you. So you had lots of people here last I night. I had a wonderful turnout. I had over 150 people here. It was nice. So um, tell me about this uh, particular exhibit. And uh, actually, let's start with a little bit about your background as an artist. Well, my background as an artist is I've always created throughout my life. Um, my undergraduate degree is in archetypal imagery, so I went to college for the basic meat and potatoes of my work, rather than the actual work. So technically I'm a self-taught artist, uh, but I have been painting ever since I can remember. Well, why don't you give us a tour of your current Wonderful. exhibition? This new series is the debuting of this series is called Zoomorphic News. Uh, Zoomorphic is half human, half animal. I am using a lot of mythology and archetypal imagery for this show. This right here is Ganesha. Uh, he's a Hindu god. He is a patron of the arts, so of course I had to have him. Okay, beautiful. Uh, we'll go on into a minotaur over here who is, of course, from Greek mythology. Um, I have a couple other Greek mythology. I did a centaur over here, if we can pan. Here, uh, my centaur there, and then on the other side of this, if we can get to it, um, there is a very, we'll just swing it around. Beautiful. Of course, I had to do a little mermaid. Gorgeous. So I kept the pieces um, at a, a number of 12 which has a lot of numerological um, value to it. Um, but I, I started with these three, the Minotaur, Centaur, and Mermaid were my first three. I decided to go into some of the other mythologies, such as the Hindu I already showed, which was the Ganesha. Um, coming from a somewhat Christian background, I could not resist, of course, doing um, an angel and devil. Zoomorphic, again, is the attributes of animals and humans together. Uh, this particular angel has, of course, parakeet wings, or parrot wings. I kind of decided to go a little bit non-traditional and give him a little bit colorful. The Hindu mythology of angels have very, very colorful wings. So because angels are found throughout cross-culturally, I kind of decided to make my angel a little cross-cultural. So tell me about the devil. The devil is right here. I actually just sold him this morning, so I'm very happy about that. So you sold the devil to someone as opposed to yourself to the devil. Exactly. Absolutely. Although I might have done that a long time ago. Who knows? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I kind of chose to go a little traditional with the idea of cloven ho hoofs, horns, and, and tail but I kind of wanted to make him a little softer than what devils usually portray. Okay. So while he was a little traditional, I kind of tried to interpret him in a maybe non-traditional way. All right. Now, did you ever, I noticed that some of your, some of the male genitalia shows, did you decide that on the devil, did you make a conscious decision that he would be in this particular position? Um, Honestly, I don't have the only, I have a hint of it on the the Minotaur, but I don't do. I think my work is is somewhat sensual, but I don't really do erotic art per se. Okay. So I don't do um, work that is all about the genitalia. Okay, sure. So, um, yeah, I wanted these to be nude because I did not want there to be a, a specific culture attached. 
As we continue, we'll see some of the Egyptian mythology that I, that I um, drew from. And what I, what I didn't want happen, oops, what I didn't want happen with this, this show is I didn't want people thinking, oh, that is Egyptian, oh, that is Hindu because of what they were wearing. I wanted the contrast between animal and human to be a little bit more visceral. And tell me about this one. This is Bat. She is a, a cow goddess from, um, from Egypt. Uh, she, she's not normally depicted in, pain, in Egyptian paintings, but she's depicted a lot in uh, Egyptian um, pennants and, and jewelry. Okay. So uh, she's always depicted with horns and cow ears, and um, she's one of the old, old goddesses. Okay. Um, right next to her is Horus. Um, he is a sky god of Egypt. Um, one of the things I'm incredibly fascinated by him is most sky gods are gods of the sun or gods of the moon. It's usually one or the other. Oftentimes throughout mythology, the moon is represented as feminine, so it, the, a goddess is usually represented by the moon. Horus, however, was goddess, god of the sky, and it is said that he had the sun in the, his right eye and the moon in his left. So okay. he connected to both of them. We have just a few more minutes Two left. Minutes. Okay. Well, let's move right along. Um, we'll be rather quick. Um, Minhet, Kenmu, Tatanen. Um, they're all Egyptian gods. I would like to focus our attention over here, however. Um, it's called Lo and Fra. Um, the inspiration for this piece is based on a, a small, uh, probably about a six inch statuette that is 32,000 years old. Um, it is the oldest known representation of, of a zoomorphic figure, and it's one of the oldest art um, sculptures that is in existence. So when I did my studying for this series, I was really fascinated to know that the, one of the first art structure pieces was zoomorphic. So that's what he's inspired, inspired from. And of course, throughout Egyptian mythology, there are a lot of gods and goddesses alike with lion heads, so there's a connection there as well. Um, quickly, if we can pan down here, these are some of my older um, figurative pieces. Um, I tend to do those in those rich ochre, red sienna tones. Um, I have a whole series of birch trees as well, and deep forest trees. I also have, if we can turn around here real quick, um, abstract pieces that I have done a lot for designers. Uh, and for myself. I also do Joshua National Park stuff. So I have about four or five different motifs that I continually return to and draw from in order to continue to produce and create. Um, all of this you can find on my webpage, which is acrowscalling.com, exactly like it sounds, A-C-R-O-W-S-C-A-L-L-I-N-G.com. Which in this room is your favorite painting? My favorite painting. I was asked that a lot last night. And you night. don't want to answer it, do you? I have, I have several. I have several. It's hard for me. Um, the Minotaur, um, I used him a lot for my press. I love him. This piece down here, I have loved for a long time. Um, okay. So I'll be very sad to see that one go when it does go. But... Um, um, just in the last 30 seconds or so, or, or show, or so on the show, what, ins what inspires you in general in life to follow your dreams? Um, what inspires me in life to follow my dreams? Um, I think it's just a need. It's a need to create. Um, I have always been a creator. I'm a, a writer as well. I have three unpublished books that I've been working on, and um, I've always had the need to get whatever is inside out. Well, thank you for getting your voice out to my worldwide audience. With Timothy Crow, I'm Nicholas Snow in Palm Springs. Remember, you can see all of our episodes at snowbiz247.com. And from this video at that site will be a link to Timothy's website. So thank you for watching. And thank Thanks you, for Timothy. Having me, Snow. Thank You're you. You're welcome.